I was arrested on June 27th, and I was held until about the 20, the 28th around noon, or well, two or three like, in the afternoon. And the situation goes as I was, I was going down the street where I live, you know, well, street where, near where I live on Monroe Ave, and I was trying to help people who I felt were being ganged up on, and help them protect their rights and protect them from illegal sorts of procedures that the cops or the cops felt that they could do. They're patting them down for weapons. They're patting them down for weapons, right? But what what are you being detained for? What are you guys being detained for? You don't know? What are you guys being detained for? Where are they being detained for, officer? Huh? Ask him if you're being detained. Excuse me, officer. Peace officer. You have a right to uphold the Constitution? Right? protecting these people's rights. Um, what are they being detained for at this moment? Just make sure you get his business card. Oh, don't don't worry, don't worry. Today they just had a case. I'm, I'm giving you enough room to work. I'm recording you. You're being instantly uploaded to the internet. You're not obligated to make any statements. You're not obligated to make any statements. Ask him if you're obligated. You're not obligated. They haven't even shown you any of their identification. You don't have to make any statements. Please stick up for your rights, boy. I mean, I'm here just to make sure that, you know, they stay accountable, too. They're recording you with their pen mic, so let them know. I just want to make sure you boys are safe, you know? He hasn't articulated why he stopped you yet? He hasn't told you guys why he stopped you, or what's up? So you guys fit the description, so they can be a bias towards you? They're not allowed to do that. I mean, you can ask him if you're obligated to answer any of his questions or show him any identification. I'm here in your support, you know, like... This is enough room, you guys think, you know? Not interfering with them? You guys mind if I'm recording you? Excuse me, peace officer. Would I be able to get a business card from you? Do you have... Okay, can I speak with you afterwards, please? Would you mind? Alright, thank you very much, peace officer. 1084, but I still need a business card or you're out of uniform. Well, why are you out of uniform for conducting business? Do you have a business card that they can get, please? I don't want to have any conflict with you at all. I'm just curious, you know? You're here representing us, the people. I just want to make sure that you're keeping these boys safe.
Wow, that's profiling. That's really profiling, you guys. Thank you very much, guys. Excuse me. Is that you guys done conducting that? All right, they're not. That's the legislature. Excuse me, aren't you obligated to talk to the citizens? You have to be accountable. Why are you guys leaving? I asked for both of your business cards. I asked for both of your business cards. Can I have your lieutenant's name? Can I have your lieutenant's name, sir? I, can I have your business card so I know who interacted with these boys and I need to also make sure that I can speak with your lieutenant because you're not, you're not even in uniform. You're not even in uniform. Okay, what's your name? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I saw like multiple cars up and down the street so it wasn't like it was an isolated situation they were handling something or anything like that I saw I felt as if this this doesn't seem right I'm gonna go over there and watch the situation goes as I mean all that I realized after the, the kid has a suit against the police officer for assault a few years ago he was the only one in cuffs they were accused of passing back bags back and forth, but as you see in the video, there's they get let go, so nothing was found on them, which, I mean, I feel the cops jumped out. I feel personally the cops jumped out, did a legal search, and if they found something, they would have been pursued or, um, you know, anything, anything, found any reason, just, just to show authority. <laughs> I, I was on, um, well, I would say the left-hand side of Monroe Avenue, mm -hmm. Um, right about to be in front of the pawn shop and I um, took out my camera and I started to record which I feel now that I don't know if you want to use this but now that people have technology it's moving so fast that they can't stop it and that's why they want to make the iPod radar detectors I just heard about and uh, that will if you're within a, a wavelength of whatever it will shut your camera I can't imagine if my phone stops recording if I'm this close to a cop I don't feel that that's safe and letting a cop know that technology is on, their technology corporations are going to, you know, help them in their pursuit of <laughs> peace and justice just literally leaves us more defenseless. One, well, there was one uh, police car. One police car. One, one police officer. Car. One officer. His name is Gabriel Person. I don't have his badge number, but his name is Gabriel one. Person. And uh, he was searching the boys. He seemed to get a little, I'm not going to say, I don't know, I don't know how he felt specifically, I'll speculate and say that, it seemed like he got uneasy when I was there. I went to go walk away and go towards a store, I was about to go get some juice and head over to a friend's house, hang out for the night, and um, like I said, immediately, they weren't even, as you'll see in the video, there's <laughs> two parking spots right in front of these cops, but instead they decided to park diagonally in the street. So they go from obstructing one side to pull across the street, obstruct the other side of traffic. They claim in the report that I was the person obstructing traffic. Well, I, mean, I don't have to show you that. That I was obstructing traffic by crossing the street. But as many people, I mean, I don't know who this is going to go to, but I'm sure people cut across the street if they feel it's safe. I don't play in the street like it's Frogger. <laughs> so it's not. <laughs> you know, I want to be safe at the end of the day. So I do things within my judgment that I feel are safe for me. But they felt. It wasn't safe for me, so they came over and put their hands on me, which I felt, which I think, whatever, I don't see how that's any safer. Put their hands on me while they were asking me for identification. They only asked me for ID, New York State identification, which kind of implies that I have a driver's license or ever went to go get one, which is, it doesn't, I mean, I don't want to get into that now, but you know what I mean? That implies that you have that, and I, I don't, I didn't have it. I said, I'm not going to get attacked this even though they're already arresting me. So then they said that's why they're arresting me, besides the jaywalking, which is a ticketable offense. They never asked me for my name at this point. They never asked me for my address. How did they, I, how I did saw they grab the you? cops were approaching me. I wasn't, you know, I have a lock on my phone, so it doesn't always make it easy to get to the quick or recording application. So, you know, like, I need to find a better way to get to that. <laughs> but I wish I had that recorded. That officer, the officer while I was being arrested, for whatever reason, I was trying to exercise my rights and ask them why they were arresting me, why they had their hands on me, what are they doing, ask for their superiors. Um, Gabriel Person pulled out his personal iPhone, which I've established 
they don't issue iPhones to police officers. So it was on his personal phone, he has my arrest. And it will show me, you know, trying to protect myself as well as I can. When he, I guess people started to group because I started asking for help, which, you know, listen, like if someone's being hurt in your community, if people can't reach out to the people that live in the community and ask for help, that's an issue, whether it's any color, female, male, doesn't matter. If someone's getting aggressed against, as a human being, you know, you shouldn't just sit there and watch that happen. And I guess that, you know, people got interested in why is this person upset, you know? Like, I don't know. I don't know. They came out. I got to sort of the conduct because a crowd was formed while I was trying to um, protect myself. And then the original ticket, which was failure to use a crosswalk, which is a driving site, to, or, you know, if you're a motor vehicle <laughs> or something, or registered yourself, or you have a license for your body. But they got switched to, it got switched to disorderly conduct, obstructing traffic. That went to obstruction of governmental administration in the second degree for not giving them my identification, even though I feel cops have to have business cards and identify themselves really well before they even start talking to me. Um, then, when they did the illegal search, which I did not consent to, uh, they found I got criminal possession of a weapon in the fourth degree. It says firearm, but it's a, <laughs> a knife, a tool, or however, you know, I, I didn't, you know, criminal possession implies that, again, I attempted to hurt somebody or went for my knife and threatened someone and they pulled it out of my pocket. I never at one time, whether it's a police officer or any other human being, I said that kind of like police officers aren't human beings, but any uh, any human being, I'm not gonna threaten them. If it's a life threatening situation, I'm gonna use whatever, whether it's the bottle of water in my hand or whatever, you know. So, but I don't feel threatened them from my community. I felt threatened by the police officers. I didn't reach for anything. I just checked, was trying to check their policy credentials, speak to someone higher up. No, you're already arrested. They said when I asked for the lieutenant. And uh, they took off my glasses because I was still asking, still asking people to help me, and put, ma held mace in my face as if they were going to discharge it if I didn't get in the car. They didn't have, you know, like, I'm not sure if any of this is policy. You know, they're supposed to be courteous and stuff like that. And, you know, they have, they have their weapons on, so. It's very short, very short Quick. amount of time, a couple, two to three minutes, because they don't want. Come on, people know me in my community, you know? I'm not a bad person, I speak to people, so I think that if it would have became a bigger situation at that time than it was, and they were causing the scene. Like, well, you know, just give me the ticket. I'll go on my way and try to find it at a later time. But I was still gonna, I think he was threatened in the video because I threatened to call his lieutenant superior because he was doing illegal searches on an area where I live. And we gotta stop going for that. We gotta stop going for that threatened me to get into the car, and I got into the car because I didn't want to be maced, I didn't want to be beaten up. The handcuffs were on, really, really tight, and uh, uh, the, along the way they were probably annoyed because I was speaking my, um, what I know about my freedoms, about my liberties, about my personal beliefs, and about, you know, I knew my hand hurt in the, the cuff, it was just, you know, cuff fight in both hands, I knew I was hurt. The red marks went away a little after, but I asked the officer when I was in the car um, to loosen the cuffs. And I figure everyone asks that. Oh, the cuffs are tight, loosen them up. But he told me I got 48 hours till I lose my hand. And um, I, uh, you know, I lost the feeling in my finger for right here. It's coming back so slowly. You know, like, I had to go to a doctor to tell me to take ibuprofen and stuff. And he can feel like swelling in it, but I, it's been a while and I still can't. It takes 48 hours, Officer Gabriel Person said, <laughs> to lose your hand. And he told me that the whole thing was being recorded. So I pray to God that my whole situation is being recorded. And it seems like they'll pick what they want and show, decide what they want. Mm -hmm. But the whole time, I, I told them I love them. They were probably going read it out. I love you guys. Like, you're human beings too. I don't like what you're doing to me. Like, what? <laughs> where, where did. Usually when you're in a situation with a cop and they arrest you, they're really, really, really nasty at first, and then they try to be your friend and gain evidence or whatever they do. And I, I try to always just speak to an officer like he's my next door neighbor, a person on the street. Like, I may not know you, but you have the same rights that I have. You shouldn't violate my rights, etc., and vice versa. And let's you know, be peaceful. It took me, it took them about 10 minutes 
I would say, to get from 677 or 667 Monroe Ave, which they might have the address wrong here, because I went there yesterday with CNN and I don't think that's the right address. I went from there to the Clinton Station, which I can give you an address in a second. 630 North Clinton, it's by that tops, um, about 10 minutes. He went through the heart of the city. He would, while I was saying things he didn't agree with, um, put me on his, uh, it's a CB radio, uh, uh, antenna, oh, no, it's not an You know, the mic I'm talking to. And he would just play it and let me talk. And I would say, I know all you officers are certified. You're supposed to, you know, just protect myself. I know, I might be a little silly in my, I don't think so, but I'm really passionate about my freedoms. Well, it was around his, uh, rear of your mirror so when I start saying something he just hold it and just like I just start saying whatever that same officer just to like show how uneducated the officers are he swore to God we lived in a democracy where a majority of people can oppress a small group of people and uh, I had to explain to him I mean shit I should have just started talking saying the pledge you know to the, to, the pro, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under, you know, but we live in a republic and he's supposed to be here representing me as long as I'm acting lawfully and peacefully and he swears it's a democracy where they can do whatever they want to us. Yeah, another officer tried to correct him and say, well, it's kind of like a demo democratic uh, republic and, you know, they work together. I was there for a real long time. They were trying to get my information. They lied to me, which they're obligated to be truthful to you according to their policies. And they told me that if I get, which just basically coercion, if I give them my name, they'll just issue me the tickets and they'll let me go home. And of course, I mean, everyone wants to go home and be free. I want to sleep in my bed. I don't want to be around these bullies anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's unreal. I think that's the situation. Like, people will feel really, really strongly about their rights and for people to do things against them at the same time it's, it's unreal like you it's like you're living in a fictitious world and a lot of the things that are happening they're happening so fast and maybe not even so fast but so deceptively like you know you might not even notice until later so that's what's like i got harassed for a long time there's a really homophobic i'm not homosexual but there's a homophobic officer and it doesn't matter what i am he should be a professional and not be making any sort of jokes like that. And that's not the first time that I've had that situation. Um, I was talking to him about self-defense. I always have the question about if a police officer is assaulting someone, what is self-defense if that person is not doing anything? Because they would say it's assault then if you try to defend yourself. So I'm talking about that and he doesn't want to hear what I'm saying. So he starts saying, well, if there's a dick in your mouth and stuff like that. He also sat on another officer's lap or something like like that, just being like, you know, these kids are ch they're children. They're seriously children. Since they have somebody up there, like a police chief, that acts like their dad, they can go out and do all sorts of things wrong. And, oh, dad, like, fix it. Like, <laughs> like I, I stand behind my officers. They're real professionals. But I had a, literally, remember, you know, if I say something, oh, like, I have a little sister. She, you know, they mimic you, copy every word you said. I had Officer Wilcox, who's also the officer I feel is homophobic. Um, Saying the same, like, saying everything I would say back to him, like, mimicking me, like. So I'd start saying things like, man, I hope through you repeating what I'm saying, that you realize, like, that, you know, again, we're all human, all that. Well, I guess I missed, like, when I got taken out of the back of the police car, um, they went back to, they went to, before I entered the station, they had my um, pocket knife. They had my pocket knife, and they were pretty close to me, pulling it out, like, putting it away, putting it back, like, you know, just playing with it really near me. I don't know if that was to, like, I don't know what that was. I'm not saying they, they did not threaten to hurt me with that. I don't want that to be confused, but they're, again, opening it and recording me. Are they trying to intimidate me or something like that? So at that point, I started saying, I don't consent to conflict. They don't consent to conflict. I don't consent to conflict until they got me inside because it was pretty dark outside. And, I, I asked for a magistrate a bunch of the time, which in small towns, if you get in trouble, they're, taking you to, they're supposed to take you to a judge, and they'll see if they want to even hear the case. I think it's, I was looking up something like uh, no pro, P-R-O-S-E-Q-U-I, 
and that is unwilling or like begging for them to not press charges or something like that. It's like there's no there's not a reason for them to be pressing charges. So I was arrested at 917. I didn't get to make a call till about 11 50, 12 o'clock. I got downtown at 11 50. It seems like they were trying to figure out what they were going to charge me with before they brought me down there to make it valid. Because there was no OGA with the videotaping. It's OGA for me not giving them my identification. But they never asked me again for my, you know, name or where I lived. Um, it was straight retaliation and they were going to find out why it was valid lawful later. <laughs> the prisoner transport people are really professional. I didn't talk to they drove me to where I had to go. Just held on to the back of this thing and got transported. I was sitting in the back at first, but then I started scooched up to the front to see what the cops were doing. I'm always interested in what they're doing and what things say, but when you start looking at their computer, whether you can decipher what it says or not, they're gonna shout it, turn up the radio. Just that people transporting me did their job. I can't say they didn't. I made a phone call to um, Seoul. Jason, and uh, when I got out in the morning, he told me what time I made the call. I tried to get in touch with my mom a couple times. Back, back, I know I lost track of this, but in, like within a minute I could say this, that why do they do things in small towns like take you to a magistrate and see if they're going to charge you and not do that up here? They detain you, then go and see if the judge wants to do something with it. Or usually you're detaining and they're just going to do everything, you know? So I felt like I was kidnapped because they never took me to anyone to see if any of my charges were valid. And if they do it in the country, why don't they do it in the city? Policy should be policy, no matter where. I was, I was, I really don't like signing things. So when they were having me sign things for my fingerprints and take my picture, I fucking like to make a funny face or something like, like could be wise ass fucking like they'll threaten that to tell the judge something and you'll be in there for a day. He's like, try getting out of here and stuff like that because I just didn't feel like taking the picture but all seriously. <laughs> I did, I did sign documents, but when I would write like either, I just try different things or whatever. Like just all rights reserved or under, cons uh, under like uh, coercion or you know, things like that. they would be like, listen, this is the last time we're gonna, you know, like and I, when you talk to them, they don't know why someone brought you in. They can look at a paper, but they don't know the exact situation. So it's easier to maybe talk to them and be human with them. But then they realize really quick, oh, they're like playing, not even playing, realizing that I'm a human and have emotions beyond the job. And they'll either stop talking to you or have like a political conversation with you. So these people, I was like, yo, you know, I was just kidnapped, so I'm not really excited about this and not really knowing why I have to do all these this paperwork and stuff like that so nothing against like him and they would say that too I have nothing to do with that but they do you know in a way they do and I understand that they personally didn't put their hands on me and stuff like that but they're just continuing with the, what I feel is evil and <laughs> what's wrong yeah. they put me in um I was in this there's when you get to jail there's phones and they only make as many calls as you can on the first phone because we get to the second phone, it's collect and you can't make calls that aren't like, I'm trying to call you, please call me, you know, come get me, I'm in jail. They're really annoying. So, um, there's a little, there's seats here where the collect area, collect call area is. I sat next to some guy, he was telling me a story about how he got out of the shower or something and some girl saw him in the window and he got busted for his exposure. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it sounded it sounded a little suspect, but you know I'm not the one to judge that person. I hope that uh, I have faith in humanity. I have faith in humanity. It's just some of the silly things. A lot of people in jail were in jail for violent offenses, and they did hurt people. So there are police officers out there doing their job, but I think that they're doing. They know that. They're enforcing policies no matter what, and it just so happens policies don't hurt people too. And they don't know that that's the law. They just see it as policy, so I'm just doing my job. Um, they took me, once I started talking to that guy, I guess they realized, damn, like, like, they don't really want me talking or sympathizing with people or telling them any of my ideals. They put me in a cell by myself until I went, I believe, to a nurse. Those could be swapped, I'm not exactly sure. 
I can't remember if I went to the nurse first then to sell. The nurse had a black eye. He was a really nice guy. You know, I talked to him. We went through the questions and stuff like that. Questions like, had, um, you have allergies, medical conditions, are your glasses prescription, your birthday, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, just stuff like that. Um, they go through mental, mental health questions. Have you been abused? Have you ever thought about hurting anyone or yourself? You know, those, that sort of thing. And this guy was really nice. And yeah. He had a black eye, it seemed. I just was like wondering if like an inmate punched him. I'm not aggressive, like, yo, man, what's happening? You know, I was like, yo, dude, like, did like, someone hit you in here? You know, like, he said that I was a pork, a pork roast gone wrong, and he was at the wrong place to look. But that guy was super nice, very professional. There are very professional people that just want to do their job. They don't want to aggress against other people. They're just, listen, man, I'm here. I'm just trying to get a check. But it's frustrating that they use those people to... <laughs> Nurse to my own cell. I'm supposed to get two cots. I have two for two cots. Mm -hmm. Not like that. Last time I was in jail, it's not, this isn't the story. Well, yeah. Yeah, they could be real nasty people. You know, I might ask the officer what time it was. It's You stay really, really restless in jail. I'm restless anyway, so jail really wasn't helping. I try to cover my face. And, mm -hmm. well, I might probably not sleep. You know, increments, 20 minutes. And then um, you get up in the morning and they take you to where everyone else is. It's a big cell full of. You know, all the other suspected criminals that they have. Um, and they come and do, well, before you do go there, they do come by and ask you if you want to get pretrial release, which is uh, either release on own recognizance or pretrial. Like, have you ever tried to run, you know, leave while the case was going on, and stuff like that? And um, I've never had a problem getting out before, you know. Um, all like all, I've never been convicted of a crime. Just I've had issues before, and guess what? I mean, I filled out. I did that in the morning. I didn't fill it out. They do it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't eat the breakfast, and then they take you over to that cell, and then someone comes in and asks you um, questions for a public defender. I asked that woman. You know, you listen to everyone's stories when you're in a cell together. Just listening. It's funny, this guy I was talking to is literally, I don't want to say his information, but got caught with some sort of drug. Him and his girlfriend got caught together. He's shouting out there like, yo, Tom, you didn't know it was there? Say it was all my fault. Literally, just get strategic, you know, right with officers all around. They don't care. They don't care. Just go out there and do what you can do, I guess. It's a game. Fight as well as you can fight, like Gladiator. <laughs> It's so I got out there and I feel like he saw my charges and my um, criminal possession of weapons since it's a firearm. I feel the judge glanced over it, didn't really glance at the fact that I've never been convicted, really, even though it was pointed out and never had a violent offense type things. Like, and I got, he sent me right back to jail. I was pretty sure I was going to get out. It went from, my bail was pretty high at first, it went down to something reasonable. Um, I just had trouble getting the money down there. I had a great support group of people I didn't know at that time was down there trying to help me. Um, and he saw my case, and that was great. I was out looking out there, you know, you're always looking for a family member when you see, you know, a friend out there that's really great. But I got sent back. And, but with other people going in, and uh, off of someone else going in, shit going on out there, you, you don't really, like, yeah. know what time it is. You lose sense of time. <laughs> that must be a great thing when you're in jail and you got a long time to serve though. They sent me back. I had to get dressed into browns. I uh, knew about a thing. A guy, when they sent me back, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Basically, you know, they sent me back. I can't make a collect call. He said, yo, Tom, you need your emergency visit. I was like, what's that? They said, like, before they put you in jail, put you upstairs, and they, they give you an emergency visit so you can get in contact with somebody. And I was like, all right, all right. And the pre-trial woman came back because I didn't get it and asked me for no phone numbers to call and had to call these people, like, call these people, try to get my bail, try to get out. I think they extort people at that point. At that point where I was, it's like, you're going to come up with the money or you're going to stay in here. And um, I asked for my emergency meeting. I literally had one of the, I don't know if it's deputies, bailiff, I don't know, police and their policy enforcer in there tell me that, uh, how'd you know about emergency meetings, you know? Getting my browns that were, <laughs> you have to get in your boxers, put on these browns, 
I think are clean. And then they take you out to some sort of, let's say, you know, get you ready to go to jail. So a nurse calls you before they take you up into jail. It's a female, she's seen, she seems like she has some kids and she's stressed out, just probably from her regular life. And I said, I hate, I hate, I hate when I hear myself doing that because like, again, I'm justifying for someone treating me like shit. And it's like, I wouldn't treat her like shit. Like, again, like I keep saying this, it might sound silly, but I'm not as old, nearly as old as a lot of these people and I have to ask grown ass adults with probably children, please lower your voice. We're not arguing. This isn't, I don't, don't want conflict. This isn't a confrontation. You know, it's makes me look like I'm a human being. Go in there. I'm filling out literally the same form that I filled out the other day with the guy with no problem. She's always all of a sudden having issues with the answers I'm having because they're not specific enough. I'm telling her with issues about my epilepsy, like I do, I've never been conscious for a seizure, so I can't tell her specifically when I've had my last seizure. I don't really remember a, a, some, certain things. She was asking me about that. She asked me other, just you know, I just I was bummed out. Of course, I'm not wanting to answer these shitty questions and stuff. Also, you're not required to answer the questions. They even say that, but she gets to a question about, <laughs> have you ever been abused? And I just started laughing at her. Like, you know, I just got like beat up and brought in here basically. I didn't tell these people to put their hands on me, so. <laughs> I showed her the marks on my arm, but you know, like I said, they went away. And they, they don't respond to that. You're in, when you're in jail, you're a criminal until you can prove that you're innocent. I mean, that's not how it's supposed to be. And that and fear of the people that do get convicted of crimes and they didn't do anything, they're they have to be treated like shit the whole time too. You know what I'm saying? That's not fair. I heard a statement the other day, I was watching something called Don't Talk to Lawyers. Well, I've seen it before, but there's a statistic in there that says twenty five percent of people that have been exonerated from DNA evidence admitted to being guilty for a plea. You know, why would you do that? They actually didn't do it, but pled to their own guilt. The people don't like having to deal with this. They really don't. It's really sad shit, dude. It's frustrating. It's hard to find legitimate help that, <laughs> you know, the pe you, people that care about you really aren't able to, unless your father's a judge or in one of those positions, they pay people good money, you know, to, enforce policies against people that they don't enforce against the people that they pay. And that might be confusing to talk to say. Did you get the gist of what I'm saying? She got to the question then about, have you ever considered uh, hurting anyone or, your, or yourself? Like the suicide question. And I stated to the tour that I'd rather be dead than live without my liberties and freedoms. Period. I told her I could like twice. I watch her jot down instead, which again I'm in fear of how many times they're able to just write this for people. Um, said would rather be dead than here. I said no, I didn't just tell you that. Write down what I just told you. And I gave her a different variation of that. That if people with guns and weapons are gonna tell me what to do and put me in a cage or take my life if I don't comply with them or beat me up until compliance then I'm just a slave. And I, I just, you know, I don't want to be here and be someone's slave. And she calls in her corporal because she wants to give me a tuberculosis shot right after that. Like immediately, she wants to stop asking me questions. Give me a tuberculosis shot. And, I said, and she's, she's frustrated, really, really, really like, I mean, I'm talking like this, but she doesn't feel like it happened again. <laughs> I asked her to lower her voice, she called her corporal in. Because I told her, you're mad at me, I'm not letting you stab me with that needle. Period. She calls her corporal, tell the corporal that he's here to protect and maintain my individual rights, and you know, basically that he's certified. And I said, This woman's really, really mad. I've had asked her to lower her voice, and she wants to stab me in the arm with this tuberculosis. She's little, she's like shocked. She doesn't want to say anything. But, like, you know, like, I'm not letting her assault me. Period. Another uh, nurse goes by, she seems very nice. I say hi, she says hi. She continues the conversation with the corporal, you know. They're very like, if there's something going on here, they'll still talk about their business amongst themselves. So I say, why don't you let that woman give me the shot? She doesn't seem like she's nearly as frustrated as this woman. 
that. Oh man, that woman was not. <laughs> you, people hate being talked about. Just like your lawyer, when he's making decisions on your half with a judge and you're sitting there watching and you can't do anything. People hate being talked about when you're right there and no one's like, looking at you or asking for your input. <laughs> so he says, oh, okay, I know what to do. I don't get the shot. He goes and takes me to the psych ward, to the psych wing or something. And in psych wing, they say they give you like a um, solitary, a solitary type thing, like your own separate cell. And um, it's like a circle, kind of. So one or two, three, and you're just separated, not too far from other people. And you know, you talk, you try to talk through a hole, and some officers, you know, will talk to you about politics and life, and they're just there doing what they get paid to do. And then some of them are just hard ass, and they just won't say anything, won't speak to you. They take your glasses when you're in there, so I wasn't really able to see the whole time. Um, Shortly after that, I asked them about getting me another cop because they're supposed to give it to me because they have epilepsy. Or they tell you what to do with them too, which is weird. Like you have two cots in the cell, they're gonna come beat you up if you use a cot as a blanket. <laughs> like they come and I said, you know, where's my other, you know, cot? And when can I make my emergency call? And he says, oh, you're being bailed out. Don't worry about it. You won't be here much longer. They send in this uh, mental mental health assessment lady. And I speak to her about liberty and stuff like that, and I don't feel she thought I was crazy at all. Uh, I told her exactly what I told the woman. If they're just going to tell me what to do, well, you know, I'm a slave. And I want, if I can't live without my liberty and freedom, I don't want to live. And I'm like, that's really shitty. That's a shitty way to live. And sometimes I feel selfish because there's a lot of people out there suffering, but if I can't control my own body, I can't help anyone else understand that. You know? I can't, I'm not in Africa right now, and I probably would have been shot a long time ago. North Korea, or to, you know, different places. So, I guess, sweet that I live here, but it's not very far. It's not very far off from those things. I give them back their browns, I get dressed back into my clothes, which is small in jail, and um, the guys were out there. You guys were out there for me, yeah, man. He released me right there to to you guys and then left like oh man and I feel like if it wasn't for you guys I've never been able to even for the minor things like I've got um, I got a, I got punched and got a disorderly conduct and I wasn't able to bail out of jail I had to defend myself against a crazy um, I don't want to say crazy but a very unhappy ex and I uh, wasn't able to be bailed out um, I've never been able to be bailed out of this system up here and because of the support I feel that I was getting from the people calling in, helping out, they let me go, man. And, and they usually say they're not going to do it without valid identification for myself. And they arrest me with valid ID, and I always bring up the issue. If you don't arrest me with valid ID, how do you demand valid identification for me to either go to court or get bailed out? But they let me out, man. They probably didn't want my information. Well, maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe it's speculative. They said my phone was evidence, which, according to all my charges, my phone at no point was evidence. If my phone was, say it was like the Miss Good case, and my phone was used to record the cops and they charged me with OGA for interfering and here's the evidence, then I guess my phone would be evidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy they had to steal hers, but... Um, my phone, they tried to steal my, the, the, my phone was not evidence because I was charged with OGA for not showing a D, not for recording. So at no point was my phone evidence, but they had it all night and said that was going to be evidence. So when we went, it's all, this all on tape, I'm going to try to get it all done. Mm -hmm. My computer's processing this little slow, maybe I can get it over to you better. But you'll see, like, we go upstairs where I'm asking for my stuff back. It's not filed here, it's not here. Like, wow. Hmm. If it's evidence, is that tampering with evidence? If it's supposed to be in evidence and it's not there? <laughs> so I go downstairs, I say, hey, my phone wasn't evidence in this. I need my phone back so I can live. I got, I lied. I usually, you know, I try to be very honest. I lied and said that I have to call pre-trial and how am I supposed to call pre-trial if I don't have the phone? So I don't know, I'll put them in a kind of weird situation I feel in. 
Souls there, he's kind of like a really, um, he's an aggressive type, um, he's aggressive against bureaucracy, for sure, and he uses different methods than I use. I tried the nice approach, but nice approach usually doesn't work with people that will assault you. <laughs> like, please, can you give me back my phone? Like, <laughs> please stop beating and whipping our communities and shit. Uh, <laughs> but... It wasn't there. All of a sudden, I start talking to people. They say my phone's gonna be there, and some of those uh, sergeants would leave, and then I'd have to start the process over. You saw. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, the officer from the previous night, um, who his name is Luciano, he filled out much of this paperwork, even though the interaction was with Officer Person mainly. But um, he shows up all of a sudden, an hour, hour and a half later says, all right, I'm going to go see what I can do about getting your thing from wherever. Be right back. All of a sudden, it's filed into evidence when we go back upstairs. When the sergeant came and said, I don't want to be filmed and stuff like that. I go upstairs and start talking to him about his homophobic officer. And he uh, basically starts touching uh, my friend's property. He sent me up with while well, I was recording just his audio. And I said, okay, I'll turn it off. And when I'm up there, like... It's literally the second thing filed, and just, you know, I wasn't going to point it out to him, but yeah, like, why wasn't it there, and all of a sudden it's now filed, what the fuck were you doing with my phone on it? Thank God it has a lock, it doesn't help for quick, but thank God it has a lock, thank God the battery died. Um, he said, so what do you want to do with this? I said, you know, he's like, I can, you can file a complaint said, you know, I probably do want to do that. I probably do want to file a complaint. And he said, okay, I can have you come down to my office and do that. But I also told him, I also want to file criminal charges against your police officers. I can't have you do that, he said. I think it's really hard. It's really hard to press criminal charges against police because you have to go through the police internal investigation to see if they're guilty of something or if they're willing to crucify one of their people for doing what they all do. He wasn't, he's not willing to do that. There has to be an easier way to press charges against human beings that hurt other human beings, whether they're dressed up in some play suit or not. You know, like, there has, there has to be a way to hold everyone accountable. Especially, at least here in America, because we have the Constitution here, and they have to abide by that. I'm not obligated. They sign that shit. Now do what you're supposed to do. Public servant, please. Yeah, give me my phone back. Like, it's not... Like it's like it's nah, a thing. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah, he he signs it as, um, basically he's a superior and we released it to this person. I signed for it. Go back downstairs and I leave for the day. It took way wow. too long. It, it was I was done at like what five five thirty. I mean, they don't make it very hard to defend for you to public defense or to go through the right way of doing things. Even if you go through the right way of doing things, it's opposition because it's a lot of cops. I've been to the mayor, I've been to, you know, city, well, I went and left messages and been trying to do things. I've gotten more help with the individuals who work there than, you know, well, the public servants, there are public servants, but the ladies and stuff have helped me a lot in doing FOIA requests for each of those officers' oaths, <laughs> helped me find out where I'm going to be like, what I can do. I, um, what I've been pursuing is, I FOIA, like I just said, their oaths, which say they're supposed to uphold the Constitution. I'm trying to get the judge who's going to be trying me's oath, because he's not supposed to have respects to person, whether they're rich or poor, just he's supposed to do equal justice. Um, also, I foia any and all audio or video pertaining to this. I don't know how that's going to work out, but I would like to see his dashboard cam when I was being arrested because it was just out of the way of the camera in my community. Um, I want to really, really say, and I guess this is what I'm realizing too, like in a little bit of time, like I say this a bunch and I want people to realize that I have faith in humanity myself. Not everyone is accountable to an adult. An adult is somebody that is responsible for the actions that they make and they would never an adult isn't going to try to um, violate any of your rights and liberties, but there are people out here that realize what's going on, and people, people 
love people and they just want to be left alone to the point where they're not being aggressed against. And I hear on a radio station there's people that want to be left alone and people that won't leave them alone. And I like that saying. I, I just want to be, I want people to know people love them and there are people there to reach out and we got to do this together, you know, mm -hmm. not, and it's, it's not a thing against cops. Cops should be doing the same thing, you know, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of animosity in our community towards the police because we're, so, you know, towards us as the police officer like because of the things that other police officers vigilantly like being like the vigilante type do you know it's not we need everyone to get together mm -hmm. as a community it doesn't matter what color age you know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and people want to say racial profiling it's just profiling period human beings and to understand it happens to black people but as a black person i realize that it's happening to other people around the world in america we're slaves. We're slaves to not wanting to die and be able to live. But freedom's not free, and people that would trade their liberties for, you know, security or freedoms for security deserve deserve neither. And it's strange when you it's strange when you talk, like, what our founding fathers say to these police officers. They don't they don't notice or recognize these things. They don't go home and look up our rights and stuff like that. It's nine to five. They go home, be with their family, wake up, do what they're told. If no one else out there loves whoever gets to hear this, I mean, I would love and, you know, as a human being, love and help those people and support them in any way that I can. Because, again, when I got out of jail and there are those people there, that's something I can't express. And to know that there are people there now trying to help me get in touch with the people I need to. They're more friends than the bureaucrats. <laughs> but my friend, you know, that that shit's unreal. And sorry for using the vulgarity, but I don't have a way to express that. Your mom and your mom might be there, you know, anytime you do something, whether it's right or wrong, but to have the community behind you. you know, some community of people you may or may not know. try